so I won't dance around the dick. I don't think Pokemon games are good. Sure, I played most of them growing up, but looking back, nah. Of course, Mystery Dungeon is the exception, because those games are great, but I'm talking main series here. So with that in mind, last year I found a Pokemon game I actually really liked, because it does things that other Pokemon games don't, and it handles the story the way I think a Pokemon game should. Have you ever wanted to play a Pokemon game that was open world? Has heavy customization of nearly everything, from your character to the music that plays in battles. Super optimized settings to not waste your time, all centered around the godlike Gen 2 era. Dude, let me tell you about Crystal Clear. Pokemon Crystal Clear is a ROM hack of Pokemon Crystal. It was released around September of 2018. What does it change? Nearly everything. Like, so many changes that you'd have to play through just to see it all. I'll talk about the major changes though, the ones you've probably already noticed. I suppose the first major change is the Pokemon sprites. Every Pokemon, shiny or not, can all follow behind you. They have their own sprite. These are our menus as well, and that's crazy super impressive to have so many different sprites. It's, it's kind of nuts. The Pokemon doesn't even need to be at the front of your party to be the one that is following you. You can interact with the Pokemon too, and they have different dialogue and such depending on where you are or what kind of Pokemon it is. And even after events and talking to characters, that's a lot of work. We're just hitting the tip of the iceberg. Palette. This one is nuts. They have increased the number of colors that can be displayed on the Game Boy. Well, virtual Game Boy. This means that you can see characters with different skin colors, hair colors, all mixed and matched. And these carry on to trainer sprites too. They appear the color they do in battle as they do in the overworld. That's, that's how cool is that? One more big change before I get into the meat of this video is the character customization. This is a really cool feature. So basically you choose a base character such as red, blue, yellow, etc. And you can change the colors around to make your own character. You can only change two colors, which is usually the skin and the hair. But even then, I've made some pretty cool characters with just that. And you get to choose colors on an RGB scale which is, leads you to a lot of different color options. That's pretty nutty. Aside from base characters, you can mod in your own. Look, I put myself in. Hey look, it's one of my characters from the game I'm working on, which you can follow at twitter.com slash energyheaven underscore. Got him. Anyways, the modding scene for this game has released a lot of custom bases to use. Look, I'm Link, I'm Guts. There are a ton of fan-made bases, and it's fun to mess around with them. Okay, okay, let's, let's calm down. Things are getting a little too epic. Let's start at the beginning. So you click New Game, and the game begins. You are asked to design your character, as mentioned previously, and then you get to choose your starter. You know, Chikorita, Totodile, Cyndaquil, Charmander, Squirtle? Bulbasaur? Ditto? Magikarp? Eevee? Porygon? Smeargle? Okay, what the hell is going on? Yeah, there are like 30 different starters you get to choose from. But it's okay if you're struggling to make a decision. It is possible to get every Pokemon here. 
and encounters in new areas have been adjusted in order to make it easier. Next, you choose between where you want to start, Kanto and Pallet Town, or Johto and New Bark. And then the game starts. From this point on, there's no cutscene stopping you from progressing, telling you where you need to go next. You're free. You can tackle any gym you want in any order. Want your first gym to be Claire and Blackthorn? Go for it. Levels are scaled based on the badges you have. You can do whatever gems in any order you want. This gives the player a supreme amount of choice. And deciding what gym to do will have wide scaled repercussions on your whole entire playthrough. Because every time you beat a gym, everyone levels up. Every trainer, gym leader, everything except wild Pokemon will increase in levels. And this is brilliant. This means every trainer has 16 different teams depending on your badges, which is an insane amount of work. But it also means that no matter where you travel, you are always getting a challenge. Look at Faulkner when he has 16 badges. He has a darn level 70 Zapdos. That's insane. He's insane. We need to get him out of the game. It forces the player to make a decision. I have a fire starter, so should I battle the bugger grass gym early, or should I save them for when I have more badges and they are harder? Oh no, my team sucks against fire types. If I don't handle the fire gym soon, things are going to get really difficult in the long run. Choices like these heavily affect gameplay, and the availability of these choices is one of the things that make this game special. You have to choose carefully depending on your team, and with how easy it is to catch a variety of different Pokemon, everyone's team and decisions will be different. This game even lets you rebattle gems so you can see what the gem would have played like at a certain amount of badges. Badges also unlock legendary encounters and events, and even level up stores. You can buy more items at the store, you can buy more TMs, speaking of TMs, all of them are easily available. And there are even bonus TMs and moves you can teach your Pokemon, including event moves, Gen 1 TMs, and you can even teach your Pokemon moves they don't normally learn, which greatly helps with the balance of certain Pokemon. Look at my unknown, they know Tri-Attack, Metronome, and, well, Hidden Power, of course. But hey, screw the gems, right? Just walk past them all. Crystal Clear introduces a ton of new characters, trainers, and areas. Areas filled with cool items, and quests, things to do. This is Gen 2 expanded, extended, perfected. It always feels like there's something to do. And if you're stuck on one gym, if you're stuck on one fight, you can go explore another area instead. The world is free to go wherever you want. No cutscene or stupid evil organization that you have to deal with. No linear story beats you're forced to follow. No playthrough will be the same as the other. And that's why I want to talk about how this game handles the feel of Pokemon better than any other Pokemon game. Okay, let me explain. This is heavily my opinion, but I feel like this game handles Pokemon story better than any other Pokemon game. This isn't a story about you stopping evil organizations, saving the world, making rivals and friends. No, no. This is a story about you, your journey. A quiet story starring just you and your Pokemon friends you make along the way in order to become the champion. No rival, no team, suck my dick, Team Rocket, whatever. I mean, hey, you can even play the Team Rocket member. Your journey is the centerpiece of the story. And everything you do contributes to the story that you are paving. Like, let's say, hey, I started in Pallet Town. I chose Charmander as my starter because I'm two years old and I think Charizard is a cool Pokemon. Because of this, I decided to skip Brock and Misty because I don't think I'm ready for them. I make my way over to Saffron and I fight Sabrina. Then I take the train and now I start my journey in Goldenrod City, Johto. With my team as of now, I feel confident and I take out Whitney before she sweeps me for all out. 
I tried to get the squirt bottle from the flower shop, but I don't have enough badges, so I can't. So then I head to the park and I find this weird old man and I fight him. Boom. That's a story, all consisting on choices you made as a player. You know how many people have followed the path I just laid out? Very few, because there are so many variables and paths to go. I could have went to Johto right after Viridian City if I wanted to. I could have went to Victory Road almost immediately. This world is compact and easy to navigate, and that's why it's a good open world game. Having constant quests and derails like most open world games is what stops them from being truly open world. When I can watch several playthroughs of open world games and see within an hour every playthrough is still doing the same starting quest laid out for them, then that game has failed as open world. The only important main quest in Crystal Clear is get all gem badges. How do you do that? What do you do? Where do you go? Like, let's find out. It's not in the script to force you to go here first or here. And all the little encounters, weird random areas and such you detour to all add up to what is your story. And that's what matters the most. Okay, I forgot to put this in the original script, but this is important to so keep your ears perked and your dick hard. I always thought it was weird that Pokemon games have to derail your main goal of getting all the badges to introduce a villain or some random person, some random evil person. Like, it's unnecessary, there doesn't need to be a bad guy. Especially if the reason you're going on this journey is just to get the gym badges, these guys have nothing to do with you. And hey, if you need characters to flesh out, how about the Elite Four? What's up with that? Why are some of the final fights leading you to becoming the champion always the most forgettable characters? Crystal Clear is amazing at this. No spoilers, but you can meet and even battle every Elite Four member outside the Elite Four. Just on random routes and such. Each one even has their own theme. Some of them name their Pokemon. It shows characters in ways other than dialogue. You get to know and have past experiences with these trainers. So when you find out they're in the Elite Four, it's actually kind of a surprise. Instead of wondering what random obvious plot twist character will be the champion you have to fight. Come on guys, step it up. I'll be honest, Pokemon Gold was one of the first games I've ever played. I remember that my family found it in a Game Boy left under a chair at a hotel. Such a random thing. I still remember choosing Totodile as my starter. I named him Killer. I was the seven year old Edge Lord. But hey, what I'm trying to say is Gen 2 holds a bit of a nostalgic place in my heart. So much so that I consider Crystal to be better than Heart Gold and Soul Silver. It's the graphics, the music, it's such a cool style. But of course, nowadays I can tell you I don't care much for Gold, Crystal, Dixpole. Much like any main series Pokemon game. And even when I was younger, I really disliked the part of the game where Team Rocket takes over the radio station. Like, I don't care about what these guys are doing. This felt so unnecessary, slogging through all these trainer battles against the same Pokemon. But, you know, I wish I could go back to that time sometimes. The time when I first played through Gold. The memories of watching friends play through the game on my Super Game Boy, remember that? What a time. The simple time, where I wasn't afraid of wasting time by playing video games. Life was a lot different when you didn't realize that everyone's going to die and that there's no way to stop the time. And I'm no longer the kid that gets excited when I get a gem badge, or when my Pokemon evolves to me, that's just numbers increasing, sprites switching out. But when I first found out about Crystal Clear, and then I first started my playthrough of it, it all came back to me. These childhood memories became Crystal Clear.
Oh well, hey, this video is nearing its end. This is the epilogue, the end screen, where you can see the other videos I made, which isn't much at the moment, but yeah, this isn't going to be another Cogdis video. I will say that, as a forewarning, in order to get this game, you will have to join their Discord server, to, or the Discord server for Crystal Clear, and there's some things you need to do to get your hands on the ROM. The reason is, also secretive is because idiot DMCA crap, so it's understandable. Just know that there's sort of like a mini side quest just to get the ROM. But hey, I'll help you out with the first step with the links in the description. The game's Discord is there, which is also where you go to play with those cool mods like playing as Link and all that that I showed off earlier. Alongside that is my Twitter, the game I'm working on's Twitter, and hey, my Patreon. Support me there and get free art, early videos. Well, I guess it's not really free. Anyways, I guess my final thoughts, I mean, I don't think I'm going to sway anyone to not buy darn Sword and Shield. Game Freak disrespects and spits on their fans, and I always hate to see those kind of people getting disappointed by the Game Freak games, but hey, it's whatever. This is like the only main series Pokemon game I care that much about. I feel like more Pokemon games could benefit from letting you choose gems. Just drop the forgettable characters and story beats that you do every single game. And it'll all be so much better. But, you know, whatever. I don't care about the official Pokemon games, I'm just chilling. Placing my bets that there still won't be a gender neutral option in the next Pokemon game. So I guess that's that for that. I'll catch you guys another day, someday. See ya.